What's going on guys? Chaos here. Bring you guys another video. You know, I've been told my intros have been a little bit too long lately, so just to spite y'all, we're just going to sit here. Two hours later. Nah, I'm just kidding. This game consists of probably my biggest mistake in my entire Madden career, and it's a really good game for you guys overall, both for excitement and for you guys to learn how to. So I hope you guys are ready. We'll jump into this video now. Alright boys, let's get this thing rolling. As always, man, it's the Chaos Coaching, so I may pause it here or there. It'll be rare, but if I think there's a key moment where a key decision was made or a key play happened, I will pause and kind of explain. But right here, guys, we'd like to start the game with a perfect laser. First play of the game, we throw a pick six, man. This is the Steelers Club, champ uh, club Championship. We're playing against Deliverance. It's the live stage. And man, that's not the way you want to start a tournament, get, guys. First play of the game, we throw a pick six. I was trying to fit that corner out in. There's a space where you can throw it even against the cover three match at that time. And I just messed up my uh, I just messed up my timing on the read. And match was different back then. Cover three actually matched to the corner routes. So it was a, it was weird. So you kind of had to play a little bit differently. Uh, but you had to throw it at a certain timing. I threw it at the wrong timing. Ends up at pick six. So after that pick six, guys, really all you're trying to do. So you're just trying to bounce back. You're really just trying to make sure you go get some points this drive because you cannot be stopped two times in a row. And you gave him a free seven without even having to see his offense, so you don't know what he's going to want to do. And we're doing a good job, though. Honestly, guys, I wasn't I wasn't too nervous about, about what happened simply because I honestly felt so good on offense at this time. This was the time of the year where I felt really confident in myself. And I honestly felt like I was the best offensive player in the game, or if not the best, top three at least. So making one bad read, one bad decision that leads to a big pick six, I could definitely, I could definitely make up for that, and and I'll be fine. But as you can see, we move the ball down the field very, very easily. We haven't thrown an incompletion yet. Right there was another product of the flood concepts back then. I had to run counter go as opposed to verticals because the matching matched on my uh, on my corner route from verticals. So it was a weird time. It was, it was like a one month time period where you couldn't run verticals. At the beginning of the year you could, at the end of the year you could. But there was a one little small period where you couldn't use it and this was the time. So flood concepts against cover threes and cover fours were a little bit more complicated and you see me running counter go so I have to rely on an H back swing which isn't the most ideal thing. Now this read option, he ran this almost all game. In the first half it gives me a ton of trouble. I have, he, he quick hikes it and he does a good job with his motion so it's tough to shoot the gap even with the motion and if I'm not in the gap he gets great blocking downfield so definitely had to be something I had to worry about throughout the entire game simply because it was just such a easy run and it was really good run and he was able to hike it very fast so it gave me trouble so you can see he's still moving the ball well and you're gonna see from his passing game he he likes to do a lot of short stuff it's a lot of drags a lot of slants a lot of ends a lot of table routes he doesn't throw much downfield he really doesn't He's a very methodical, short short route guy, and you need to take him away and send pressure at him. When you play someone who wants to take all short routes, I try to play aggressive, take away his early reads, and then by the time he tries to look downfield, if at all, he's sacked. So I don't do a good job in the first half. I don't set up quick enough. As you can see, I'm getting quick hiked. He quick hikes the table route there. Throughout the entire uh, first half, I was just getting quick hiked over and over again. So that's just on me. I need to set up quicker. And if I'm not gonna be able to set it up in time, I need to figure out a solution so that I can get something set up in order to get stops. And simply, I just didn't do a good job of that in the first half, and that's why I didn't get a stop. I didn't even come really close to getting a stop on this drive. He's had third and second and shorts all game long. And right here, just another dot. Bad user by me. I honestly don't even know what I was doing. Kind of running backwards right there. And uh, next play, we actually do a better job against the run. We know he's trying to run the ball. It was about this time period when I started manning up people every play. I knew he was either going to go short or run the ball. Manning up my safeties got them into the run fits. Not sure if that's going to work in Madden 20. I hope so. But in Madden 19, it definitely was the case. And right there. I can't believe he fit that in, guys. I honestly don't even know how that possibly got there. I had a yellow there, a deep blue, and a cloud. Somehow it goes. Tough break. I have to, I have to, whatever. I didn't get off the field. I need to get three right here. There's no... There's no choice other than get points right here. It's his ball at half. If I go into half down 14-3, his ball, I have almost no chance of winning this game. 
I have to get some type of points. And right there is the timing against the cover three match. I told you guys there is a timing for it. I messed it up on the first play. I got it right right there. Big read, big first down. Need to get in field goal range. One more play right here, and that's it. We got ourselves in the field goal range pretty much. I'm just going to run the ball one time, I believe. Oh, no, I actually do pass the ball. I have Allen Cross. It definitely should have uh, ran the ball with Allen Cross in the game. I don't know why I wouldn't, but and I'm taking my three, and we're good. So now we're only a one-possession game. We just need a stop out of half, one stop out of half, and we're in business. That's all I'm thinking right now. And I'm going to pause it after this kickoff because I'm going to tell you guys what I was thinking. So I knew he wanted to go short stuff and run the ball. So those are the two things he wanted to do. I needed the man at my safeties, and I knew that because I was not stopping his run with his motion. So I manned my safeties. I crossed man him on his tight end and his inside receiver. Those are the guys on the drags and the slants most of the time. I knew I had Dion and, and I don't remember who my other safety was, but I knew I had Dion and one, and the other guy was relatively fast. I was just going to man them up, let those guys get taken away, and hopefully he would get sacked before he could make another read outside of those two. And his little out route that he liked to do from his middle receiver, I could lurk that myself. And then it would stop the run because the manned up safeties. If I could do those two things, I knew I would get stops, and you're going to see the results of it over the course of the second half. So, let me get rid of this for you. So, yeah, so you're going to see it right here. Just letting this play. I gave myself a little bit of time to explain, uh, and here we go. So, you're going to see it. Watch my safeties. Every single play, they're going to be right into the run fit. You see, they didn't shoot down perfectly right there, but they shot down pretty well, and we do a good job against the run. Next play, I'm going to continue to do it. I'm not going to allow him to run this ball every single play on me. And there you go. You see the man and their cross man against the pass. They take it away. He throws me my pick, and I don't get it. All good, though. I was pretty pissed about that, but we're going to keep on fighting. Next play here, I'm doing the same thing. Man safeties. Excuse me, I didn't man my safeties that time. Let me pause it. I, I know why I messed up there. The reason why I didn't man my safeties right there was because I knew he wasn't going to run. It was third and five. I did not expect to run, and I didn't. The reason why I said I was manning the safeties there, I wasn't really registering that it was a third down, but definitely, definitely didn't need to man my safeties simply because it would be it would kind of be useless and I would have to trust them to do the exact same thing. Plus, he had just seen that cross man against the pass. I didn't want to give him the exact same look. As you saw, he had a corner route out there instead of a drag from his tight end. It would have beat the cross man. But we got ourselves a nice little user pick. You know how you know how it goes. We're, we're he's starting to sweat now, guys. Pretty much, when you get that stop and and he loses control of the game, like he had perfect control the whole first half, literally the entire first half, everything he was doing, he had perfect control. He starts to sweat a little bit and it starts to get a little tight. He would have got a little bit tighter if I had made that pass from Michael Vick. <laughs> you see me right there, brutal, brutal, brutal pass. But all good we got ourselves a stop and we pretty much figured like figured out what the defense is to stop him we feel like we we have the cross man down to stop the run as well as his short passes and then when we get him on a passing down he's going to struggle to find somebody before the blitz gets there so got to make sure we continue to do the right things and we'll be good to go i believe that was rob woodson i think i have rob woodson and dion and right there more perfect defense man safeties again and it works now he goes to bunch when you were in bunch early in the year and you don't it's not your main formation so you're not mixing things up you got to think probably verticals every single time that's what it was we adjusted perfectly another stop for us man we're really starting to lock up this is when he really starts to get tight he starts to get sweaty things get real real physical right now and i'm making my run you guys see ever since that pick i've been passing the ball incredibly I just made one mistake early in the game, which honestly is what kept it a close game. Because honestly, if I don't throw that pick six, I really feel like I, I get this, I get control of this game and I pretty much win it in a blowout. Honestly, I feel like. So take that what you guys want. You guys can have your own opinions on it. I personally feel if I don't make that one mistake, I, I completely own this game. But I did make it. So we're fighting. Things are gonna things are gonna be closer, but we really feel like we're taking control of the game right now. We've got back to back stops and we're feeling good. Right here, we hit our S post. Stefan Diggs was such a staple for me early in the year, man. He was probably my favorite receiver early in the year. The guy just really fought. Next play, we're continuing to move the ball. He screams at me, and Michael Vick just makes a nice little Michael Vick play. Somehow gets out of that sack, and we, we turn it into a positive. I'll take that. Next play, we're going to try to run the ball. We tried to establish the run all game, but we never, really, we never really got anything going with it. But our passing game was great, so we can definitely work with that. Next play here. I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, I was putting a running back at tight end as opposed to a tight end early in the year. There was no fast tight ends that you could really work with, so Barry Sanders was perfect. He could catch relatively well. He was fast, 
and he really did a good job for me. You see back-to-back -back catches by him right there. Really, really helped me. Uh, really helped me early on in the year because you need some speed at that tight end position. And there's nobody really suited him. So we drive down, man. We get our touchdown. We go for two to go for our uh, for our three point lead, but we don't get it. But either way, man, we're feeling so confident right now. We've got back to back stops. We're moving the ball easily down the field. He really doesn't have anything for us. We just have to make sure we don't do anything stupid. Right there, he drops the ball, and we almost get super lucky. But then he ends up catching it, so it ends up being worse for us. But the game is just funny like that sometimes. But we're doing a good job. We got him on the second and 12 here. We're starting to blow up that run. I told you guys in the second half I would start to blow up the run. Next play here, perfect defense. Nothing's open for him, and we're screaming at him with LT. Third and 25. Now, I'm going to pause it really quick. You see someone come out in a formation you've never seen before. Uh, sorry, I've seen it before from them, though. He hasn't came out a bunch tight end all game. You just got to think about the main plays. I'm thinking deep corner, deep crosser. That's it. I'll take the rest away. I'll give up the short stuff. I don't want to give up any bombs. I'm lurking the crosser or I'm lurking the deep corner. Whichever play it ends up being, you go to it. Now, if they're a bunch tight end all game, you obviously have to be more precise about it. Okay, they might be mixing in short corner routes, mixing in different things. But if it's the only thing you're seeing from the guy you know it's going to be the main plays. So that's what I'm thinking. Now I'm running back. I see the corner out. I'm giving him that. That's cool, honestly. Pick up your 15. I would have liked to probably give up around 10, but fourth and eight, I'm feeling good. He doesn't like to go deep. Short stuff is really what he does well. I thought he was going to throw it to the backside slant. Lurk back on it, and he throws the underneath guy. Good read by him. He just had too much time. I really didn't think he honestly should have had that much time. I sent 3-3-5 three, three, odd, which was five against five. A lot of the time you got a guy free at the time of year, but all good. I told you guys I would lurk that out route myself. I've been all over his short stuff all game. We got him in another third and 19. If we don't give up too many yards right here, we win the game, and we just couldn't get there with Troy Ackby. He was too slow, man, and he takes us three. Now, last drive here. I have my two timeouts. I have a minute 20. I'm feeling good. I'm not too worried about the clock. Obviously, if I can get out of bounds, I do. But I don't have to rush. I can get my right plays in. I only need to get three. I don't need seven. So I just get my right plays in, don't take any sacks, and move down the field. You don't need to do anything crazy. You don't need to do anything stupid. You don't need to force anything. You have plenty of time. This is Madden. Now, Madden 20 with the different clock, a minute 18, you're going to be rushing a little bit. But we're not in Madden, uh, Madden 20 yet. We're in Madden 19. Right there, this guy baited me a little bit. His cloud came down, went back up. Not the worst read. He looked like he was mad about that, but I honestly didn't think that was too too crazy. I looked like I just dropped the ball. But third and five, we need to pick up a first down right here, and we go to double and sale. He actually did a great adjustment to man up my tight end, but that's why we have Barry Sanders, guys. He's way too fast. Now, got to pause it. I'll pause it right there. You see it. It says time out. Guys, I have no idea what I was doing. I told you guys this was the biggest mistake I've ever made in Madden. This right here was my biggest mistake, dude. I want to cry, think about it. I'm not going to lie to you. I just, I had a big play. I got so, look at, oh my gosh, look at the top right corner. <laughs> um, This was the time I knew, like, I didn't think about being in field goal range. I was just like, I need more yards. I called timeout. Like, it was like I was still on my money drive. But I was at the 30. I was already in field goal range. The game was over. I literally had to run the ball three times, kick my three, and walk out the gym. Game was over. I called timeout not even thinking. Now it puts me in a position where he can call three timeouts and he can get the ball back. So I'm try I'm still trying to get a first down now because of that timeout. So we're going to run the ball first play, pick up a few. It's not bad. Now I do go to tight slots dive. It was a run I was confident in. And I actually pick up a lot of yards. I should have gotten a first. The guy gets a crazy shed. And in hindsight, I should have went back to it because I went to fullback dive, which he had seen when I got in the end zone before, and he blows it up. Now... Last pause of the day. I told you guys, uh, I've told you guys before, I said it all year. My only regret from, this, regret from this game was that timeout, and it was a huge regret. Kicking deep right here is not a regret of mine. If you sky kick, he has about 16 seconds. One pass out of bounds, you get a field goal. I just, I can't live with that scenario. I can live with myself kicking deep right here, and whatever happens, happens, but... I'm gonna let this thing play, man, and I'm gonna. Let, I'm just gonna let you guys see the clip for yourself. But hope you guys enjoy, man. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe, and let you guys finish this out, man. In my sorrows.